there are actually three arrangements that are very, very symmetrical and that they're so symmetrical we can actually figure out what the electric field looks like in those arrangements without having to do any math. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you those three arrangements. Okay, the first very symmetrical charge distribution, um, arrangement of charge, is an infinite plane. So an infinite plane is, first of all, a plane. So it's a thin layer of charge. Um, and I can't draw an infinite plane. So what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to draw a part of the plane, and then I'm going to pretend it extends in all directions with these dotted lines. And so those are the indication that you should imagine this going on forever. OK, so for the infinite plane, the first thing I want to do is identify some of its symmetries. Well, one thing that I can do is I can slide this plane over. So if I slide it in either the left or to the right, because it's infinite, the plane will look exactly the same after I do that. So I can slide the plane like this. Or I could slide it in another direction, like this. Okay, so this plane is going to look the same as I slide it around. And if I imagine that the plane has charges on it, then those charges, that distribution of charges, will look exactly the same after I slide it any which way. In addition, I can also rotate the plane any angle. So if I rotate it um, within the plane of itself, then it's going to look the same. Um, I'm only able to do that because it's infinite. If it were, say, a square, if I rotated it some amount, then the corners would be in different places. But because it goes on forever, um, it looks exactly the same when I rotate it. Um, finally, and we won't really need this one so much because this is, I think, kind of obvious that this should be true, but we could also flip it up to down, um, like make the top of the plane the bottom and vice versa, and that also should work. So um, that's another type of symmetry we can take advantage of if we need to. And that's actually enough for us to figure out very precisely what the electric field has to look like. Okay, so this was my perspective view. But now I'm going to draw a side view. Okay, so here's my plane from the side. So we're looking at it edge on. And remember, this thing is charged. Okay, so let's say I've got positive charges along here. And I want to propose possible electric fields around it. Okay, so let's say that I imagine that I've got some electric field that looks like this, and then over here it looks like this, and then over here it looks like this. Well, does that violate any of my symmetries? And the answer is yes. If I imagine that I slide this plane, let's say I slide it this way, then this vector will end up being at the location of this vector, and the electric field has changed. Okay, so because my charge distribution looks the same when I slide it, my electric field vectors also have to look the same. Okay, so I can rule out anything that looks like this. Okay, well, let's say that I do a distribution. Okay, and I'm not going to draw the pluses, but it's still charged. Let's say that I have my electric field looking like this. Well, that now satisfies the sliding symmetry, but does it violate any of the others? And the answer again is yes, because if I imagine that I rotate this thing within the plane of the, um, the plane itself, then I can make these point the other direction. So I could have them like this after the rotation. 
Okay, and so they again look different. Um, so again, I can rule this out. So if I try to come up with a um, arrangement of the electric fields that doesn't violate either of these two symmetries, then what I get is the following. Oops, wow. Okay, so I've got my plane like this. And the only thing I can do that will look the same if I slide it or rotate it is have the electric field vectors point directly away from the plane. Okay. They have to be equal sizes as I move around because when I slide it, I want the same electric field. And they have to point directly away because as I rotate it, they have to be in the same direction. Okay, and then based on this flipping symmetry that I, that I described up here, the electric field beneath also will point directly away, okay, which I think is not too surprising. Maybe you don't need to make a symmetry argument for that one. Okay, so for an infinite plane, the electric field points directly away. And that's really cool. That isn't obvious that that would have had to be the case, but using symmetry, we can see that that should be what happens. Okay, that's our first arrangement. Um, my next arrangement that I want to consider is going to be a long um, cylinder of charge, or you can imagine this as a charged rod. Those are what we used in class. Okay, And let's imagine that this again is infinite. So it goes off in both directions forever. Okay, and again, there are positive charges on this rod. Okay. Um, this is actually a really good model for a lot of things. So for instance, a wire might look like an infinite rod from up close. And so this is a really useful distribution of charges to consider. Okay, so again, we want to think about what symmetries this has. Well, one thing that we can do is I can again rotate this any angle. Okay, so if I rotate it around its axis by whatever angle I want, it looks exactly the same. Okay. I can also flip it top to bottom. I can translate it up and down or slide it. Um, translating is the technical term for sliding. Um, or I can also flip it this way. That's another thing I can do. Um, and you might think that's not really a useful distinction when I can rotate it, but it actually is. So um, let's see what sorts of electric fields I can propose then for this situation. Okay, so this is again a side view. And let's say that I wanted to have the electric field vectors that looked like this. Okay, as we moved. Well, I know this doesn't work because this violates the sliding symmetry. Okay, and by the same argument that I used for the infinite plane, if I tried some shenanigans where this went like up, but the same amount at each spot. Well, that also doesn't work because if I flip it, then this doesn't work. Okay, so um, this one I can rule out because of sliding. This one I can rule out because of flipping. And so really the only sensible arrangement I can go with um, is something where the electric field points directly away from the rod. So like this. So that's good. Um, in this view, that looks like I've basically solved it. But let's look at it from above. Okay, so we'll do a top view instead. And that will also be a little bit instructive. So if I do a top view, this is it. 
Okay, so I'm looking lengthwise down the rod, and I want to come up with some possible electric fields. Well, I know I can rotate it around its axis, so one thing that I might do that would be consistent with that is I could try to draw electric fields like this. That would be okay. As I rotate it, then this arrow would end up over here and this one over here, so that would be satisfied. But this is where flipping it comes in, because if I try flipping it over this line, then I get a problem, because this vector ends up up here and I get something that is inconsistent. So then the final electric field for this situation has to look like this. pointing directly away from the rod radially like this. And that is true both in this top view and in the side view, pointing directly away. Okay, and we'll be able to use that to find what the electric field is in this case. Okay, one last situation, and this one is actually the easiest one of all. So the last situation is a um, spherical arrangement of charge. Okay, so my sphere looks like this. I didn't do a great job drawing it, but it's got some charge, Q. All right, so what could I do as far as symmetries go? Well, I can rotate it like this if I want, but I could also rotate it any which way I want. So I could rotate it this way, I could rotate it like this. Any rotation I can think of for this sphere will make it look exactly the same. So any angle, um, any axis will work. Okay, so if I try a few things, then eventually I'm going to find that the only distribution of electric field that works for that arrangement is if it is pointing radially outward. Because if I have any other components to the electric field that aren't pointing directly outward, then what will happen is if I rotate it, then it won't match up. Okay, so if all of the vectors point directly away from the center and they are equal sizes at the same distance away from the sphere, then when I rotate it, it looks exactly the same. So that is the arrangement of the electric field for this case. All right, so we were actually able to do three cases here. We can draw what the electric field looks like without doing any math at all. In the next video, I'm going to use Gauss's law and these symmetries in order to calculate what those electric fields are.